Debian EDU is uh, a distribution based on uh, Debian, uh, which is used to manage a school network. Uh, it has a, a main server, and then it has some uh, disk list uh, client that uh, can access the server through LTSP. Uh, it can also contain printers in the network, uh, and also uh, contain workstations and remote workstations. Uh, in a simple installation, uh, we just need to install uh, the main server. And uh, the main server should have a specific IP, uh, 10.0.0.2. And also the, the main server uh, provide, provides DHCP uh, so that the disk list clients can, uh, can get an IP from it and other uh, details, configuration details, host name, etc. So since the uh, main server provides, provides DH, DHCP, uh, there should be no other uh, DHCP uh, provider in the network. DHCP. Uh, for this reason, we should make sure that the, the network, uh, the router that we are using to access the network does not provide DHCP. So if it is an, a router or, or an access point, we should disable uh, DHCP on the interface that is uh, connected to the school network. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, if, you, if this is not possible, then we should install, we can install a simple computer as a gateway uh, so that it provides connection to, inter to internet but uh, it does not uh, provide uh, DHCP to, to the rest of the network. Initially, we are going to uh, create a virtual uh, network for, for the first switch, which is called switch zero. Uh, we, we will call it switch zero, and then we will create also a virtual network for uh, the LTSP LAN. And we will call this one switch one. And, uh, and then we are going to uh, create a virtual machine for the, for the main server, uh, which is connected to both of these uh, switches or, to, or both of these uh, networks. This, this is the network that provides the uh, internet connection. And this is the internal LAN uh, that is used by LTSP clients. So uh, let, let's start by uh, creating this uh, virtual uh, network for switch zero. I'm, I'm using uh, LXD and LXC for uh, virtualization uh, on a remote server. LXC, LS, uh, the, uh, actually we have some virtual machines. Uh, and LXC network, LS, this shows the uh, virtual networks. Uh, actually, I have created uh, these two previously, but we are creating two, uh, we are going to create uh, two other uh, uh, virtual networks fr from scratch. Uh, and I've also written this blog with uh, the instructions, and I'm going to follow the instructions in, in this blog. I will send it also to the chat. So here I explain also how to install uh, LXD. It is very simple. Uh, so I'm not going to do it right now. Uh, also some instructions how to access LXD from a non-root user. Uh, and then uh, it is important to, to disable uh, any firewall in the server. Uh, for example, I have installed firewall D and I, I had to disable it because uh, it messes with the network configurations. Uh, probably it, it is possible to uh, to configure it 
correctly, but uh, I couldn't find it uh, yet how to do it. So I just disabled it so that uh, it can work. And then uh, I use Xpra to access the display, uh, the X display on the server. It is like X forwarding, but it is more, uh, more efficient and it, it, it gives better results. And I also show in this section how to install uh, and how to set up Xpra. Uh, it is actually uh, very easy. Uh, on the server, we need to install uh, these pa packages, Xpra, uh, Virt Viewer, and these two other packages. And then uh, we create this script, Xpra start start .sh. Uh, with this uh, content, we, we kill any existing extra processes and then we start a new one with a specific port, uh, display port. And uh, in order to access uh, this, this, uh, this display uh, port on the server, we need to be able to access the server with SSH. And so uh, I'm, I'm here creating an SSH uh, key pair for accessing it uh, without a password, for accessing the server without a password. Uh, and then this uh, script is uh, executed on the client in order to access the display on the server. And uh, actually the basic command is this one, extra attach and then uh, an SSH, uh, using SSH mode, uh, user at server, uh, the display, X display that we are attaching. And then uh, I'm using this SSH uh, command because uh, I want to, uh, to use a key file and also a special port. And uh, now we start with the, uh, with, we're cre creating the virtual network uh, with uh, the name switch de zero, which is called switch zero. So I'm running uh, this command. But uh, actually, I will call it switch zero minus one because I, I have already a, a switch zero. And uh, I'm telling the network uh, that uh, or the IP that is going to, to have this uh, switch on, on the in, uh, internal side. So this is the, the gateway for the, uh, for the computers that are going to be connected to, to this uh, switch, for the virtual machines that are going to be connected to this switch. Uh, this, this will be the, the gateway. And I am saying DHCP false because I don't want it to provide uh, DHCP, but by default it provides uh, DHCP for the virtual machines that are connected to it. Uh, and also not true because I wanted to act as a gateway for accessing the, the network. Um, okay, it, it is because I'm, I'm using this, uh, this one with the same, with the same address. 100 for example. This command network show will show the configuration of uh, of this virtual network. It is called switch zero minus one, and this is the IP address. DHCP false, not not true. And uh, I need to create an internal uh, switch as well, uh, which is uh, this one. Uh, this. This was the external switch that connects to the internet, and this is the internal switch that uh, is used for the LTSP clients. And uh, I will create it in a similar way. IP, IP address none, uh, IP before not false. Uh, 
this switch is not going to uh, be used as a gateway. So uh, we don't give an IP uh, to it. And uh, also we set uh, not to false. And uh, let's, uh, let us show the configuration of this uh, switch. Uh, we can also remove uh, these two settings. We can remove them at all uh, using the command unset. So LXE network unset, the name of the network, and then unset this uh, setting, uh, ipv4.address. And also ipv4.not unset. Uh, let us show, see again the configuration. So uh, they are removed at all uh, from the configuration part, uh, the configuration section. And uh, now I'm going to create a virtual machine for the main server. LXC init uh, main server. I'm calling it main server one because I have already a virtual machine uh, called uh, main server. Uh, here usually should come the the base image that is used for uh, creating this virtual machine. But we are using empty because uh, we don't want yet to uh, uh, we don't want to to use a, a standard image. For example, a Debian image or an Ubuntu image. Uh, we, we will add an empty disk uh, later after creating the virtual machine. And uh, this option VM tells uh, LXC that this is going to be a virtual machine because LXC can be used uh, to manage uh, containers as well. But we need a virtual machine in this case. And then uh, we are connecting it uh, to the network. So the default uh, network is going to be switch zero one. And we are setting some uh, configurations as well. Okay. Configuration uh, limits dot memory four gigabytes. Uh, configuration uh, limits dot CPU two. So it is going to use two virtual CPUs and uh, four gigabytes RAM, which are uh, I think the the minimum for for a main server. Then we are going to attach uh, this. We are going to attach this virtual machine to uh, the internal uh, network as well, to switch uh, one. So LXC network attach. We are attaching uh, this virtual network uh, to this virtual machine. And uh, now we are also assigning a hard disk with a certain uh, size. Uh, so LXC config uh, device override. Uh, this is the virtual machine. So we are uh, changing the configuration of, of this virtual machine. And then this is the device that will be uh, changed. And then the setting uh, uh, is size 60 uh, gigabytes. Uh, now we can see the configuration of this uh, virtual machine with the command LXC config. Oh. Uh, these are the limits that we set with the configuration. Uh, this is the MAC address of, of interface Ethernet 0, and this is the MAC address of the other network interface, which is called like this. And uh, the, in the section devices, we see that it, it has a default uh, network interface, uh, which is connected to this network uh, with, with this name, and it also uh, has a 60 gigabyte hard disk. It is connected as well to uh, to the network switch one minus one, which is the internal uh, network. Now, 
Now uh, we need to attach uh, because this is an empty uh, uh, a machine with an empty disk. The disk is just empty. We did not use a pre-installed pre uh, image. Uh, so we need to install it from a CD. So we are going to attach a CD-ROM device to this virtual machine. I've already downloaded this uh, Debian EDU uh, image, uh, which is, I think, about five, five gigabytes or so. Uh, it is about six uh, gigabytes, so it has all the uh, packages that uh, need to be installed. And I'm going to attach this image as a CD-ROM to this virtual machine. And uh, this is done with the command LXC config device add. We are adding a device to the configuration of uh, main server one. And then the device is called CD-ROM. So this is just a name. It can be CD-ROM one or CD-ROM two. It, it doesn't matter, it's just a name. This is the type of the device, uh, disk. And then this is another option or setting. Source, uh, which is the path of the ISO that I've downloaded. And then uh, boot priority one. Boot priority one means that when I start this virtual machine, it will boot from the CD ROM. And we also have to set this uh, uh, special setting as well. Security dot secure boot equal to false. And uh, let's see the configuration of the server. Anyway, so LXC config device show it will show uh, without device it will show all the configuration settings uh, with this it, device it will show only for the uh, section device the settings for the section device so we have a cd-rom as well be, besides the other uh, device that we had previously and now we can boot this virtual machine uh, with the command lxc start Uh, this terminal is uh, accessed through extra and uh, every uh, command that opens an X uh, display on the server uh, will be forwarded to my local machine so that I can uh, I can see it. So LXC start main server one console equal VGA. It is starting the installation from the CD. I'm making the making it full screen so that uh, we can see it better. These settings do not matter. They can be anything. And uh, here we come to the configuration of the network, but actually we don't have a DHCP on the network, so it is going to uh, fail, but it's okay because uh, it will uh, set up the network configuration correctly uh, by itself, the installation program. Network auto configuration failed. Uh, there is no DHCP on the network. That's okay. Continue. Uh, do not configure the network at this time. Continue. And uh, now uh, we are at the part that we need to choose uh, Debian EDU profiles. There are some profiles selected automatically, and these are the correct ones for uh, a main server. So we can just install the main server, but uh, then we will not uh, use uh, 
we can install L an LTSP server separately from the main server, but we can also install a combi uh, combined uh, server, which contains both the main server and uh, an LTSP server. And whenever we install the LTSP server profile, it also uh, needs to install a work workstation. So uh, the main server is reserved for the Debian EDU server. It does not need uh, it does not any include any uh, graphical user interface. Uh, it uh, it installs only the services that are needed. For example, uh, Squid, DHCP, uh, DNS, uh, and uh, everything else uh, that that is installed in the server, but does not install a graphical user interface. This workstation installs uh, a graphical uh, user interface, a desktop. Desktop and also uh, the educational uh, packages, which are actually a lot, and it it installs a lot of lots of packages. Uh, uh, this LTSP server, uh, which includes also workstation, uh, uh, include in, installs the LTSP uh, packages so that we can start LTSP clients on the on the LAN. And this uh, roaming workstation can also uh, be used can be used for a laptop so that uh, a user can use it at the school network and then can take it home and can use it at, at, at home as well. Um, and this standalone profile is meant for machines that uh, are going to be used outside the Debian EDU network. So. Uh, it does not integrate with the rest of the Debian EDU network. It just installs uh, uh, a default uh, Debian machine with uh, with educational packages. And minimal is a special uh, profile that is used in some cases, uh, but not. Uh, it is not. For example, if uh, we want to separate one of the services uh, from the main server, for example, if we want to make Squid or DHCP, uh, uh, if we wanted to install it in a separate server, then we first install the minimal profile and then uh, we install the service and disable the, that service from the, from the main server. Automatic partitioning tool, yes. Participate in the package user survey. Usually, we should participate, but in this case, we are just testing. We don't want to participate. So this is this is the root password. And then it also creates uh, uh, the first user. This user is important in Debian EDU because uh, this user uh, is given access to uh, LDAP and to other uh, services. For example, to Goza, Goza which is the interface that uh, is used to uh, modify the LDAP uh, uh, directory data. Password for the first user. That's one. First WFE installation, yes. Now it is going to install uh, lots of uh, packages uh, because educational packages uh, contain a lot of other sub packages and uh, it, it will take some time, uh, at least half an hour or about one hour. But we are not going to wait for it to, to finish because I've already installed uh, a main server and we can, we can continue testing from that one. So 
it will I just close the display and uh, the, the the server is still running in the background so this main server one that we just uh, uh, created and we are installing is still running in the background I just close the display but we are going to use this uh, main server that I've installed before the the course uh, in order to continue uh, testing It also has a limit of uh, two uh, CPUs, uh, memory four gigabyte, and it it is connected to the network uh, switch zero with one network interface, and it is connected to network switch one, which is the internal uh, LAN uh, with the other interface. It also has a size of sixty gigabytes, and I've already installed it. Installation. Uh, to start it and to access its interface, its display. I'm waiting for it to uh, to come up. Uh, now that we see that it has received an IP, I think that it, it is up. Uh, let's access it, uh, its uh, display or console. LXC console in server. Type. GA. So it has booted up. Uh, now I can log in either as root or as user one because both of them are created du during installation. So we said that by, by default it opens this, uh, uh, it starts Mozilla and it opens this uh, Debian EDU uh, starting page. And there are some useful uh, links about local services here, and also some other uh, links to the Debian EDU uh, documentation, web page, wiki pages, etc. Uh, after installing Debian uh, in this virtual machine, uh, I usu usually install also this uh, LXD agent, uh, which allows me to access uh, uh, the shell of the virtual machine easily uh, using the LXC command. For example, after installing LXD agent, I can I can use a command like this: LXC exec uh, the name of the virtual machine uh, minus minus dash in order to access the shell. And uh, it is easy to, to work this way because I can do copy paste. Uh, I can copy paste the commands from the manual, for example, to, to the shell. Uh, in the graphical display, it is not so easy to, uh, to work. So installing uh, this LX, LXD agent. Uh, I can use this script. I can download this script that I've created. So let me start a terminal. First of all, we 
to track the network uh, connection, uh, automatically it has given this IP to the external interface during the, during the installation, and uh, the internal IP is this one. Uh, network is working. DNS is working as well. Uh, now uh, I'm downloading uh, that script. For installing LXD agent. Let's check the content of this script. And this script is based uh, on a discussion uh, on the LXC uh, forum, which explains how to install how to install the LXD agent. Uh, basically, it creates uh, these two uh, services, this one. Uh, with this uh, co content below. So it is executing this uh, mod probe and start starting these two modules. And then uh, these commands, uh, make deal, make directory and uh, change mod. And also there is this, this other service, uh, lxdagent.service. Which uh, run, runs this command, I think. Okay. Then the script just uh, enables and uh, starts these two services. Now I, I am inside uh, the server and I can execute commands uh, from here, which is much more convenient than executing them from the uh, graphical interface, uh, from the display, uh, graphical display. So we installed the main server, we just installed it. Uh, now uh, a main the main configuration uh, tool of uh, Debian EDU is Goza, which is a web interface for uh, accessing the configuration for users, uh, groups, uh, systems, etc. So uh, let's let's open it. Uh, we can access it from uh, this address. Open link in your tab. And we can uh, use the first user uh, to log in, uh, which is user one in my case. Which I could have used another username. And saving it. And so uh, we see configurations for users, for uh, groups, for uh, NISNet groups, for systems. 
etc. Uh, for users, for example, uh, we can create users here, and all the users that are uh, created in Goza can uh, can access can log in in any LTSP client, for example, or in any uh, workstation. So anywhere in the Debian EDU network, uh, we can use the username and password that is registered in uh, Goza. Uh, so Goza is a web interface to LDAP. And so uh, let, let's create a user, for example, uh, here at actions, uh, create, create user. template. Uh, I, I want to create a teacher, so I'm using a new teacher template. Uh, last name. Uh, I'm creating user user to uh, continue. Login. Actually, I, I want to change the login to user2. And these are these other data are not important. Uh, here, maybe at post six, uh, we need to change some something. So the home directory is going to be on uh, root scholar uh, tiener home zero and I'm calling it user two as well. The shell is going to be being bash. Uh, primary group automatic. User must change password on first login. Password. Uh, these are password settings. And it belongs to the group of students and uh, teachers because I, I used uh, the teacher template. It is it has automatically added these two uh, groups. I can just press OK. And uh, password for the user two. I'm call, uh, I'm using pass two. So if I go to teachers, uh, it is this name too. Let me change it. Uh, give a name user, so name too. Okay, it's okay. Uh, login user too. So uh, let let me try if I can log in in the main server with uh, this uh, user that I just uh, created. Application. Log out. User two. Pass two. So the home directory is uh, this one. Scholar in our home. Uh, user two. Okay, I, I can uh, still access uh, Goza with the username user1 and pass1, but uh, it's better to log out and log in as uh, user1.
So we created manually a test user. Now let's test an LTSP disk list uh, client on the LTSP network. So LTSP is already uh, configured automatically uh, by the installation uh, CD. And we can just start uh, uh, creating or uh, booting disk list uh, clients in the LTSP network. So I'm, I'm going to create um, a virtual machine named LTSP01. Uh, it, it, uh, it should not have a hard disk. It is going to be a virtual machine and uh, it will be connected to the network switch one, uh, which is the internal uh, uh, network, the LAN of the LTSP. And uh, a disk list client should have at least uh, two gigabyte uh, memory. And also, uh, we set the setting uh, security, uh, secure both files. And I set also boot priority one to the network uh, interface so that it boots from the network. So config device set uh, to this virtual machine, to this uh, device, uh, this setting, boot priority equal one. Uh, let, let's show the configuration of this virtual machine. So it has two gigabytes. Uh, it is booting from the network FNL0. It does not have an hard disk, it just has a network interface. Or this one. So it has only a network interface, it does not have a uh, hard disk uh, device. But now we can uh, start it and it will boot from the network. So it is booting from the network uh, PXC over IPv4. And we get uh, uh, this boot menu from, uh, from PXC. Uh, it went too quickly because the, there were some network uh, problems, but we uh, could see there and we will see it later that we can also boot a uh, thin client, we can boot a uh, disk, uh, uh, disk list client, which is the default one. We are, we are booting now a disk list client and we can also install a workstation. There, there is an also an option for installing a workstation and installation will be done from the network. Some packages will be retrieved uh, from the main server and the rest of the packages from the internet. So we just started an uh, LTSP client. Uh, let's try to log in with the uh, user two that we created uh, in Goza. Let's open a terminal. 
So we have an IP in the internal LAN, uh, which is the LTSP LAN. Uh, can we access the internet? Yes, we can access the internet. And uh, the home directory is uh, is mounted from the server. So if uh, we make any changes in the home directory, the changes will be saved on the server. And then uh, next time we can log in from another disk list client uh, or another workstation, and then we will access the same home uh, directory. So this is the disk list uh, client. And it has also lots of educational packages which are, were installed on the main server. And then uh, if we install something on the main server, which is also the LTSP server, uh, they will be available to the clients as well. So uh, in this uh, in, in this uh, diagram, uh, we are uh, installing a disk client like this one uh, in the LTSP uh, network. But we can also install a disk uh, client in the main uh, network, which is connected to switch zero. Let's try to create another disk client, which is connected to switch zero and see that it still uh, works uh, the same way. So we can start this list uh, clients in uh, this list uh, workstations uh, in the main uh, network and uh, also on the LTSP uh, network. So we are going to create another virtual machine, but this time it will be connected to the main network, which is uh, switch zero, not to switch one, which is, which is the LAN network. The settings are almost the same, the other settings. And we will boot it from the network. And let us see the configuration of this machine. It is booting from, from network. It does not have a disk. And uh, it is connected to the main network, which is called Switch Zero. Now we'll start it. Let, let me uh, close the display of this uh, main server because probably uh, creates problems with the network. Having two displays is more heavy than just uh, accessing one display. So it is again booting from the network. And this is the IPXE uh, boot menu. Uh, the default option is disk list workstation. We will uh, start a disk list workstation, but we can also install, uh, we can start an, a thin client, which is based on X2Go, and we will try it next. And we, ha we can also install Debian IDEO from the network. So let's start again a disk list workstation. Uh, we can use uh, either user one or user two because both of them are defined in uh, Goza.
So this works as well. On the uh, on directory of user one and IP address. Now uh, we have an IP on the main uh, network 10.0. something. We can still access the network. Oh, this was tested as well. So we tested an LTSVD uh, client and another client on the main network. Now let's test the thin client. Which is based on X to go. Uh, a thin client is uh, very similar to a disk list client. It does not have an R disk, but uh, differently from the the difference between a thin client and a disk list client is that uh, a thin client just accesses the display uh, of the main server or the LTSP server. So it does not need uh, much RAM. It does need, uh, need very little uh, uh, RAM just to run the program that accesses the display. Uh, everything is accessed from, uh, everything runs on the server. All the programs that we start with a thin client are uh, actually running on the, on the server. So it does not need uh, RAM for executing them. Uh, with a disk list client, on the other hand, uh, the, the programs are loaded on the RAM of the workstation. Uh, so if we start Mozilla, for example, in a disk list workstation, Mozilla will be loaded from the uh, main server into the RAM from the hard disk uh, of the main server into the RAM of the disk list workstation. So uh, a disk list workstation need, needs more uh, uh, RAM, at least two gigabyte. A thin client just needs even 256 meg megabytes uh, should be okay. Again, we will start a boot get from network. And uh, now we are going to use uh, this option, plain X to go thin client. Let's try user two. Pass two. Uh, now look, this is interesting. When I uh, when we check the IP, uh, IP address, we see that this is the IP of the main server. So we are actually running in the main server. We just uh, are accessing the display of the main server remotely uh, with the thin client. Also, this is the internal IP of the uh, main server. And 
the home directory is the uh, correct one as well. So this is the thin client. Let's shut down. By the way, uh, if we check the server that we started to install previously, uh, by now it, the installation should have uh, finished, I think. So let's check if it is displayed. And let's see console. Server one. Type VTA. So this is the installation program which is uh, finished already. Continue. And then uh, we just Shut it down. And let's see. Oh, force. Main server one. Uh, now we need to, to remove uh, the CD ROM before starting it. Uh, let, let us show the configuration first. Uh, LXC uh, config device. So main server one. So it has a CD ROM, Ethernet zero, uh, hard disk, and another uh, network interface. Uh, now we say uh, remove the CD ROM device from. Uh, the main server. Let's check the configuration again. Now we don't have the CD-ROM. We have two network interfaces and the hard disk uh, as devices. Uh, now we can start the main server one. And let's see. Start main server one. Console equal to VGA. And we see that the system that has been installed already will start to boot. Anyway, uh, we can shut it down and continue testing uh, with the other server, this uh, main server. LXC, stop. Uh, stop first. It is uh, it is stopped already. Uh, now, what else? We tested a thin client. Uh, now we can see how to import uh, bulk uh, user accounts, many user accounts using a CSV file. Uh, let's create a CSV file uh, with some uh, user accounts. Here I am inside uh, the server. Uh, let's access it again. LXC exec uh, main server 
uh, we execute execute the command bash. So we get the terminal the terminal inside the main server. Uh, let's switch to user one. I will create a CSV file that contains some user accounts. For example, for Peters. Username, first name, last name, and uh, then password. Uh, now let's access the uh, Goza interface and try to import or uh, upload this CSV file into the Goza system. Let's see. Console. And so we are going to access the console of the main server. And uh, let's make it full screen. Is the wrong password? We are already on uh, Goza interface. And I think here at uh, LDAP tools, uh, CSV import is that we can, we can import CSV files. Select CSV file to import, browse. On the home directory, we created this uh, teachers.csv. Let's import this one and then select template. Since we are creating accounts for teachers, uh, we will uh, use the new teacher uh, template. And then just some network uh, problems. So uh, user ID is the username. Uh, this field is okay. And then it says surname. No, this, this should be the first name, given name. And uh, this should be the surname. And the uh, user password, okay, it's okay. So the order in which we uh, have this uh, data in the CSV file doesn't matter because we can fix the order here and send this column to this uh, field in the uh, LDAP uh, directory and uh, just import. All entries have been written to the LDAP data database successfully. Uh, let's go to the users. And we see this uh, teacher teacher one, teacher two, et cetera. Uh, but uh, it, it is on the base uh, teachers. So if we go to the root base, we don't see anything else, just user one. If uh, we go to, if we go to the students, it is uh, already empty. If we go to the base teachers, uh, we created a teacher manually, this uh, user two as a teacher using the template uh for teachers so when we use the template for teachers the user accounts that are created uh, are put in this uh, base slash teachers uh this end up base and uh, all the the teachers that we created uh with, with the import with the csv import uh we, we can try uh one of these uh for example uh, teacher two plus two uh let's log out Log out. Just two. Last two. 
and we can log in with it. And actually, we can use this username and password in any machine in the Debian EBU network, and we will be able to log in because the authentication is done centrally uh, via the LDAP uh, directory, uh, which is managed by Goza, by the Goza interface. And the home directory is uh, home zero picture two. Uh, let's lo log out and log in again as user one. So this is how to import user accounts from a CZ file. Now uh, there is another uh, scenario: import student accounts in a certain uh, division subdirectory. Uh, this is uh, related to, uh, or and this is explained how to do it in a section in the uh, manual. Let let me find it and follow the instructions from from there. Advanced administration uh, how to uh, user customization uh, create users in your groups. So the idea is that uh, we want to import uh, new user uh, new users in different groups. For example, the users that will graduate in 2026, for example, uh, in a certain subdirectory, the users that will graduate in uh, this year in a, a different subdirectory. Also, we want to uh, to use different groups uh, for for these two uh, 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 kinds of users. So we need to create a different group for uh, this set of users, and all these users will belong belong to this group, and another group for these users, etc. And uh, so let's say that we are going to create the user accounts for users that are going to graduate in this year, uh, 2026. Uh, so we are going to create a subdirectory first in home zero, uh, 2026. There is, there is uh, this directory. All new user accounts will be created in this subdirectory. <clears throat> and then in the uh, department structure, uh, we need we need to create a new uh, sub department for this uh, group of students. So we access Goza and go to the directory structure and we start from students and at the actions create create department and name of the department is called just 2026 or students 2026. The description description students that are graduating uh, 
126. Category base is this one, so it is going to be a sub uh, sub directory of this one, students. And I think that's that's okay. Now, uh, on the group section of Groza interface, we create also a, a special group for these uh, for these students. So we go to the to the groups, and then we select. This student student twenty twenty six, and then action actions create group uh, group name students twenty twenty six. Uh, this should be enough. It should be okay. Field name contains invalid character. S is not allowed. Okay. It should be lowercase. Okay. So we created uh, another group in this uh, subdivision. Uh, students, students, twenty twenty six. And then hotels. We need to create a template for this uh, group of users. And we can look at the current template for students and then uh, create a similar one for, for this group of students. And the final step is to, to import users, to import users by uh, from CSV. So we need a template for import for importing the users because when we import from csv uh, we are also asked for a template and the template fills uh, the missing information uh, so it it set it uh, is placing some default values for the missing information that is not contained in the csv file like the home directory etc so we need to create also a template for uh, this category of users so we go to So we um, we make sure that we have selected this uh, uh, subdivision and then we create, create a template. Template name. The base is uh, this one. So uh, when we create uh, a new student from CSV, uh, it will be uh, loaded into this uh, base. These other fields are okay. We don't need to change them, but uh, here, I guess at post six, at post six settings, home directory, it, it has to be but uh, not user two. Uh, actually, I should have looked at uh, an example. Uh, so let me try to open Gosa in another tab. And Look at users. 
So uh, here is the, the template for new students. Uh, I can click on it to see the details. So just the template name, base is student, and then here at POSIX, uh, we use this percentage uh, UID for the user ID. Okay, but uh, here we don't have uh, just home zero, but uh, also 20, 26, and then uh, percentage uh, user ID. And then shell is being bash, is being bash. Uh, primary, primary group, uh, I will select this one, students 2026. 20, Primary group. Uh, what else? We can also add. Uh, The group students 2026. Uh, just okay. Okay. So if uh, I go to this section. Uh, this division. I don't see the template. Uh, let me try again. Create. And 26 primary group is uh, this one. Uh, maybe I don't need to add a uh, group membership. Okay, now we have this template new students uh, 2026. And uh, now we can go to the uh, LDAP tools and then uh, CSV import and then import uh, a file. But first, let's, let's create a CSV file for these students. One, And now let's go to the Goza interface, uh, Browse. And we are going to import these students, uh, 2026. Uh, select template. We are going to use the new template that we just created and then import. And this is the, uh, the first name. This is the name. Use the password, import. And we see that they are imported. Uh, let's go to the users and uh, check. Uh, okay, uh, we are at students, uh, student 26, and we see that we have imported student one, student two, student three, uh, student four. And uh, let's also check the 
home directories in the main server. So uh, all the home directories uh, are in this subdirectory. We see that uh, the main group is the new group that we created for uh, this group of students, students 2026. And we can also try to log out and log in with uh, one of these users. No gout. Student. Last two. Working directory and see that the working directory is uh, this one. Log out. So we did the, this one as well, and uh, that was all for uh, today.